on the show today. Some of the highlights and possibly lowlights of Tesla's earnings call late last night, my time, their $2 billion quarterly profit. We talk Rivian's return to ramping production after a minor pause and Ford's new transit EV goes into production. Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're listening around the world. Welcome to EV News Briefly, your daily rapid fire insight into the world of electric cars and how we power them. My name is Martin Lee and I've been through every EV story so you don't have to. Join me later on the usual EV News Daily Podcast show. 1,355 will definitely go deep into a lot of the Tesla news that I'm talking about. Well, we'll start with the earnings call that Elon Musk was back on and the shareholder letter as well. They reported a $2 billion quarterly profit, but it wasn't all sunshine, a supply chain snag or two holding back production. Now, they did exceed Wall Street expectations, but surprised some by saying they've been running below capacity for some months in 2021. Sales were up 65% to $17.7 billion on the quarter. The official guidance on growth this year remains at 50%, but perhaps going off script, Elon Musk said he expects significant growth and to be comfortably above 50% growth. Profits rose to $5.5 billion for the year, up from $720 million for 2020. Sales for the year, $53.8 billion and $2.8 billion in free cash flow. Next, Reuters noting the fact that they were partly or primarily chip limited. They pointed out Tesla's own batteries will be used in the first Model Ys coming out of Texas. And Reuters also noting the public beta test of full self-driving is now at 60,000 vehicles. Doesn't sound very beta to me anymore. That's a lot of people testing some software that is not finished. And that profits would have been higher had it not been for the rising cost of raw materials, logistics, expenses, and other things related to recalls. Well, next, on the subject of the Model Y, they confirmed it has already started production in the Austin Gigafactory. They wrote that builds of the Model Y started in late 2021 at Gigafactory, Texas, after final certification of Austin-made Model Y. We plan to start deliveries to customers. Those cars will use the Tesla-made 4680 cells. Next, as for the Berlin Gigafactory and the Model Ys there, the cars will be using the existing 2170 cells that you find already in the 3 and the Y. Tesla saying they expected to receive final approval for the plant soon. And next, on the subject of a future roadmap, which was meant to be the whole point of Elon Musk joining the call, there wasn't really much of a roadmap, as in... You would expect this is coming here, this is coming here, we'll have a beta version here and a pre-production version here, and these are the dates. There was none of that. There was simply a lot of, you're getting nothing else for a while. Good news, though, that reservation holders of the Cybertruck will get their vehicle eventually, but you'll have to wait. They didn't cancel anything. They haven't cancelled the Roadster, the semi-truck, anything like that. But Elon Musk said they'll be not be introducing any new models this year and do a lot of engineering and tooling to create those vehicles and be ready to bring them to production hopefully next year. Next on the subject of the $25,000 car, that was promised in a big fanfare on battery day. Well, it turns out we're not getting that, at least anytime soon, because you can you never say never. They might make it in 30 years time, but for now, Not even being thought about, worked on, anything like that. A surprise for many Tesla investors who were assuming that was going to be the big reveal and that that was part of the reason why the stock price had been going up. When the Model 3 was first announced, the $35,000 price tag was the headline and they did eventually sell a version of that vehicle, briefly, uh, and a battery day we were promised a $25,000 car. Indeed, the question was asked on the call. Elon Musk said that car is not on the roadmap. Not a direct quote, but they're not working on it. Um, CNET.com says a central theme of the earnings call was how Tesla is highly constrained because of the global supply chain and chip shortage problems. Next, the subject of the Cybertruck came up. And yeah, not great news for reservation holders. This vehicle should have been out last year, should have been out now, and it won't be out till maybe next year, despite a series of leaks in, well, so-called leaks, in photo and video form in the last couple of days of Elon Musk driving it around uh, the Gigafactory in Austin. So we know that there is one in the world that moves under its own steam. 
The date of the Cybertruck has slipped considerably. He said it will hopefully arrive in 2023. And hopefully is the word he used. Now, this wasn't on script. It wasn't in the shareholder letter. So he could have misspoken, I guess, or he could have just been, you know, riffing and, you know, filling for time and a bit of, you know, sometimes your your brain uses words to fill gaps in sentences. Hey, I talk for half an hour a day on a podcast and a lot of it is made up and some of it, you don't always say exactly what you mean to say. So let's not hold him to hopefully, because if he's saying hopefully it's going to be 2023, well, that could mean 2024 or later. That seems crazy. He did say the annual production would be 250,000 vehicles, but declined to give a timeline. Next, we'll talk about their solar business, or kind of lack of it, really. It's just flat. It's not in decline, which it was last year. But they've had four quarters now of pretty much no growth, no decline. Buffalo News, the local website, saying that Tesla have offered very few specifics on the development of the solar roof and the critical products coming out of the facility in Buffalo that's taxpayer built and taxpayer funded. Uh, but they have got enough staff working there not to be in any trouble. But many of the staff working there are not what you'd call premium jobs. They're doing kind of labelling for t- Tesla's autonomy. Uh, but hey, they've hit their jobs targets and that's what they had to do. Next, in the final two stories, we get a little bit silly. And as you know, I, I tend to stay in the middle of the Tesla madness. I don't understand those people that put their life savings on one, one company. But hey, they've all done very well. Uh, and I don't understand people that want to see a company fail just because they hate, I don't know, or envy the, the person who's the figurehead of it. I don't know why these people want to see companies fail. But hopefully somewhere down the middle on the podcast and this show now, uh, I try and navigate that. I think I just end up not pleasing anyone, really. Uh, but Elon Musk said that he thought that they would solve full self-driving in, drum roll this year. Of course, because he's only been saying a version of that every year since 2014, sometimes saying it would be ready for highway use only. That was in the early days. Sometimes saying the car would drive itself across America. He gave up on that one for a while uh, and then said that they would nail city streets. Um, Look, full self-driving in the definition that some people think it is, which is at least level four autonomy, hands off, eyes off, have a sleep, will not be achieved in 2022 by Tesla or anybody else on all streets in all conditions. Look, level four, level five autonomy is nobody in the vehicle, nobody in a backup centre being able to you know, dial in and get it out of a tricky situation, all weather, all situations. I mean, that's just, it's not going to happen anytime soon. But what he means by full self-driving will be finished, he didn't use the word finished, by the way, uh, is that that could just mean it's a really good like it is at the minute, a really, really good level two driver assistance system. And actually, when when the beta version is on fire, it's just brilliant and wipes the floor with anything else. And then when it's not, it tries to run people over crossing the road. So work to do. But he did seem frustrated on the call and he seemed that people didn't understand it and understand how valuable autonomy is. Perhaps I would say, Mr. Musk, people do understand it. Don't underestimate or treat us for fools. Uh, But you've cried wolf too many times and plenty of people are bored of being taken for suckers. So maybe just get on and and do what you're going to do. But don't lead people to believe that full self-driving, as in autonomy, will be solved. But maybe you'll achieve some really worthy goals and that should be celebrated. Next, the silliest part of the call was about some damn humanoid Tesla robot uh, thing that moves goods around Tesla's factories to save money on labour. If only Amazon and every other car maker in the world had thought of using robots to move things around factories. I bet they're kicking themselves today. All right, let's move on and talk about really good news for Tesla in Europe. The Model 3 was the top-selling EV last year. It dethroned the Renault Zoe. In fact, it was the 17th biggest selling vehicle overall, beating some really popular combustion models. Next, moving away from Tesla, talking about General Motors, uh, CNET.com noticing uh, the news that I brought you earlier in the week about that $7 billion announcement to retool their facilities. The focus is on building the Silverado and the GMC Sierra in the facility where the bolt is made, but no mention of the bolt after 2024. Well, can you blame them? That technology is pretty old now. It goes back to the early days of the Volt and their early electric stuff. So that looks like a vehicle that is perhaps the writing is on the wall 
Next, Rivian are in the news for beginning to ramp up production after pausing for a week. Their aim is for 200 units of the R1T every week, up from 50 units a week in December. Annual production capacity in normal Illinois, 200,000 vehicles, and their new Georgia plant will be 400,000 vehicles. Long way to go till they even get to 200 vehicles a week. Next, Ford's CEO, Jim Farley, appeared on Fox Business and reiterating Ford's commitment to spend $30 billion by 2023 on electric and autonomy to build two electric truck and battery plants in Kentucky and one in Tennessee. The headline commitment was to have an annual production capacity of 600,000 units by the beginning of 2024. Well, he said it in 22 months, so, you know, work it out. Next, Ford has started production of the all-electric Transit, the cargo van in at his Kansas City factory. And the combustion version of that van is a big seller in that segment. And Ford are focusing on their charging, their services, and their fleet management telematics. They call it Ford Pro. And it's an interesting thing to see them go after that segment. Next, in China. China expects to see continued growth of EV sales. The target they've set is for 5 million NEVs, new energy vehicles, in 2022. Uh, The long-term target is, of course, 20% all vehicle sales by 2025 of NEVs. Staying in China, and the tech company Baidu and the auto giant Geely are adding more money into their joint venture, both putting in $400 million of an injection into their joint project to make EVs, the first of which will be shown off at the Beijing Auto Show in April. Next, let's go to India. Well, not quite going to India. Ola Electric is their leading manufacturer of scooters and electric um uh, not, uh, you know, like the little passenger scooters, but, you know, what we would call a, a scooter, like a, a, an electric uh, motorbike. Leading manufacturer of those are the brightly coloured scooters that are investing £100 million now into the future foundry. But it's going to be based here in the UK, uh, a, a wonderful place called Coventry. It's lovely there. Uh, and that's where they'll be designed. And they'll do the engineering here, and then the labour will make it in India. And the final story today, the fifth generation Range Rover now gets a plug-in hybrid. It went on sale today, has 70 miles of pure EV range, charges at 50 kilowatts, which is very reasonable. Uh, It has a 38 kilowatt hour battery and a 105 kilowatt motor alongside the three litre engine. Prices start at a mere £103,000 for the entry level short wheelbase. And from there, you can only go up in specs and Options, Deep Joy, another plug-in hybrid coming with a CCS combo plug to block DC fast chargers. Although, hey, if you use that vehicle and do as much electric mileage as you can and charge it every night, I mean, nobody needs a vehicle this big uh, and that expensive, but I suppose you could do some electric miles in it. Hey, this is EV News Briefly. My name is Martin Lee, and thank you so much for supporting this show by watching, hitting subscribe on YouTube, and even spreading the word and telling people about EV News Daily, the podcast, and this new EV News Briefly quick fire look at the news uh, before we put the main podcast together and start writing that. Check out the Patreon uh, because you can support the show on Patreon, P A T R E O N dot com slash EV News Daily. Get your private ad free feed, get early access, and be part of a great community as well. And it costs nothing, of course, to hit subscribe on YouTube on the YouTube channel to get the show every day. And I will catch you for the full podcast a little bit later.